Good morning, church. If you do not already know, registration is now open for our much highly anticipated Young Adults Retreat at Kuala Lumpur. Make some noise. Wow, our retreat will be held over National Day long weekend from Friday to Sunday, August the 9th to the 11th. For those of you who have joined us last year, you would definitely know that we are in for an amazing time of fun and fellowship. This year, we have Pastor Kong and Dr. Antipas Harris who is joining us and sharing the word. Now, early bird pricing starts at $360 for twin sharing and the rooms are selling out very fast. Do you know, in one week, we have already had more than 750 participants who have signed up. So currently, we want you to know that we are no longer selling rooms at the Marriott Putrajaya, but we are now selling rooms at the brand new Moxie Hotel, which is also part of the Marriott Group. So both hotels surround IOI City Mall. If you do not know, it is the largest mall in Malaysia. So I guarantee you a time where you can eat and shop till you drop. Alright, so early bird pricing closes on the 31st of March. So sign up quickly at chc.org.sg slash YA retreat. We are also offering chartered transport to and fro Singapore and Kuala Lumpur at only $50 per person. Or you can choose to make your way to Kuala Lumpur on your own. Alright, so turn to someone who looks like a young adult and say, you have to sign up quickly. Now, Easter is one of the most significant events for us as believers. It is a time for us to proclaim the work of Jesus on the cross. So let's really go all out and invite our family and friends for our Easter weekend services happening from 29 to 31st of March, Friday 4pm, Saturday 2pm and 5pm and Sunday at 10am. Our Saturday 5 p.m. and Sunday 10 a.m. services will be bilingual. Now, our drama team is working really hard to bring you an original production entitled The Trial of the Sanctuary. Wow. All right, with a fresh stage presentation never done before in our church. So you got to bring someone this Easter. Okay, and lastly, we also want to uphold all our volunteers and staff who are involved in the Easter production and commit all our preparations to the Lord. We definitely also want to cover all our friends that we are inviting this Easter. So join us for pre-service church-wide prayer meeting that is happening on the 23rd to the 24th of March, Saturday at 4 p.m. and Sunday at 9 a.m. That's right, one hour before the services start, right here in this main hall. Paul. Let's commit the entire Easter weekend to the Lord. And how many of you can say amen? So right now, let's sit back and watch this video prepared for all of you. Each of us are unique. Each of us is different. I really salute Pastor Don. New Carries Mission, 16 years, help over 3,000 ex-convicts, ex-offenders. All start from the spirit that I look at the person for who he is or she is. The past is past. Everyone deserves a second chance. And now beyond that, beyond next on vendors, we are now looking at everybody. All of us live with some kind of label. But we tear that off and we all make an effort. Connect with a fellow human and the world is so much a better place. The guy that came in first, Mr. Lil Kupchurcher. First place, absolutely well-deserving, Jared Tong! changes our life for the better and empower us to be the person who we are meant to be. Today his life has superseded any of those labels from the past. Because this is a part of us committing 
to this cause about unlabeling. It's, it's going to signify dropping the labels and embracing who we uniquely are as individuals. All right. Three, two, one. Good morning, church. My name is Andrew, and I'm the staff of the New Carries Mission. Thank you, Pastor Kong and the leaders, for giving us this opportunity to be here to promote about the Unlabeled Run. The video that you have just seen is the fifth edition of the run. But before I go into more details, allow me to share a bit about myself and how negative labels have been a large part of my life. Since young, I lost my father, and I was also diagnosed with ADHD. Because of that, I could not excel in school. I was always being labelled as naughty, lazy, and sometimes even a child without a father. As I grew older, I started mixing around with the wrong company, got myself into a lot of trouble, and was even addicted to drugs. At the age of 12, I was arrested and sent into boys' home. Since then, for the next 10 years of my life, I went in and out of homes, reformative training, and even ended up in prison. During that time, I was always being told that I could not change. I'm hopeless. My life has no more future. It was so constant that I myself even believed that I was a hopeless drug addict, stuck in this vicious cycle for the rest of my life. But God is so good. During my last imprisonment, someone introduced me to the new Caris mission, and upon release, I checked myself in. I was accepted and loved by Pastor Don, the leaders, and many of the brothers there. And for the first time, someone told me that I could change. I was also constantly reminded that, Andrew, if you surrender your life to God, He will change your life and you'll be a blessing to many. I was also assured by the Word of God that my sins have been forgiven and I'm His beloved child. Bit by bit, my life started to change. Today, I've been in the New Caris Mission for six years. I was once a school dropout. I was once a school dropout, rejected by many schools. But today, I'm a school trainer that runs programs for youths. I'm also able to contribute to the society by serving the elderly and those who face social isolation. When I entered the new Caris, I only had a primary six education. But in 2020, I graduated from our very own City Harvest School of Theology. And last year, I completed my diploma in social work. And I can see that in the next five years, I can be a certified social worker. But what was even better was that God reconciled me and restored my relationship with my family, who I've hurt and disappointed so many times. And he even blessed me with a spiritual family in the New Caris Mission, where I can grow, learn, and serve in. And I want to give all the glory to God, because without him, it is impossible. So today, I stand here strongly advocating the message of unlabeling, because labels were destroyed, but unlabeling were built. Thank you so much. Please give Andrew a big hand. Andrew, Andrew. That was amazing. How many of you enjoyed that? That was such a good testimony. Thank you, Pastor. Pastor Kenneth was next to me. He said, man, this guy can preach. Thank you so much. <laughs> and I, I'm so blessed by what you have shared and tell us, how can we be involved in the unlabeling run? Okay, Pastor, Pastor Kong, so the, of course the most practical way is to sign up outside the booth. Outside the booth? Yes, six, outside 603. <laughs> Yesterday we forgot, right, yeah. to tell them, right? Yeah. Outside at 603 <laughs> and 604, that's the first way. Yes. Secondly, because we have a new 1KM fun walk for participants from the special needs community. Wow. So we are inviting them and actually our church can also help by sponsoring them as well. Yeah, yeah. 
And we also launched a new family bundle. Family bundle? Yes, because we want to promote family bonding. Wow. So parents can come with their child and they can have this family bundle. Wow. And one more thing is that they can also follow us on our social media. Yes. Oh, for, for so yes. social media. That, that is another so way. tell us one more time. How far are you going to go? How far are you going to run? Pastor, if you run with me, I will run for 5 km. <laughs> Well, he, you talk for a while, huh? you talk for a while. That, that, that's the best I can go. Okay, okay, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Relax, relax, relax. So there is 1km for special needs. There is a um, 5km. Fun run. Fun run. Then there's a 5km. No, there's a 10km. 10km. Competitive run. Competitive, that one we cannot. Lah. Yeah, yeah. And then the, the 5km one we can, we try. Yes, no slow problem. Slow one, slow one. Okay. You can run your old man. Can. Okay. I, I must go and practice first. I also must practice. Actually, I have not run for many years already. I've not run before. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no stress, no stress, no stress. We, we just, maybe, we just walk lah. 5 km, okay. we walk. You can take picture. Take picture, we walk. Chit chat. Chit chat, okay. Fellowship. You can pray okay. for me. Okay, pray for you, yeah, okay. Okay, okay. So, so when I go, you, you stick next to me, yeah? Yes, Pastor. Okay, for okay. sure. For sure, yeah, yeah, My yeah. My honor. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I think today, uh, I, I really want to encourage all of you to please sign up for this and uh, it's such a good cause. And last year, 1,500 of our church members went to support. Let's, let's do even better this year. It would be nice if 3,000 of you can go. Just, we just try. But this morning, I am so excited. I'm, this weekend, I'm, my heart is overflowing with joy because for three months, we have not seen Pastor Don Wong in church. And he's been sick, stage four pancreatic cancer. And, and we all pray, we've been praying for him for so long. I'm still praying for Pastor Don every single day. And, but this weekend, he's back in church for the first time in three months. Pastor Don, Daryl, come up, come to the stage. Let's give them a big clap as they come. Come on, let's give it up, Pastor Don Wong. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor. Pastor. You lost so much weight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, how heavy are you right now? Uh, 60 kg. 60 kg? Yeah. Wow. I lost like uh, 20 kg. 20 kg. Yeah. I, I, Pastor, you, Pastor Don went through a 15 or 16 hour operation. And I remember 2 a.m. in the morning, I called up Vanessa, Pastor Vanessa. I said, where's, where's Don? What's happening right now? All of us praying. I, uh, Eileen, we've been praying. The yep. intercessors praying. Yep. And then, he, tell everybody, half your stomach is gone already. Uh? <laughs> oh, uh, I know even half of my stomach is gone. My digestive uh, organs only left with uh, maybe half of the small intestine, half stomach, a liver, and a large intestine. The large intestine. Wow. The rest are. <laughs> You're but, still standing. But God is good. God is good. God is able to compensate, you know, whatever that is, uh, that is not there. But by the way, I want to take this opportunity, opportunity to thank all of you uh, for praying for me, especially Pastor, Pastor Sun, uh, Pastor Eileen and the intercessor. Uh, last year was a trying year for me. Even though I go through the chemo, eight rounds of chemo without without side effect. But the operation, 15 hours, and when I wake up, when I look at my wound, I was shocked. It was from here to here. And I sent a photo to Pastor. I think Pastor is even more shocked than me, you know. And, uh, it's one and, big hole. <laughs> and uh, I think every day when I open up my eyes, is there pain? Terrible pain, discomfort. But yet, you know, the peace of God that, that transcends all understanding. I don't know how I passed the 17 days, but every time when I open up my eyes, I look to God, God just carried me through. And I believe it's the prayer of the saints, my family, the CXC. This is my family. Amen. Uh, 
You are my brother. We love you so much. We love you so much. And yesterday when I yeah. when I walk in and a lot of pastors greet me. But when I when Pastor Kong came to me and hugged me, he never say welcome. Welcome back, he said, welcome home. And you know, it's not just words, it's the spirit touching the spirit within me. You know, I'm not a person that easily cry because I'm in this ministry, you know, all the ex-offenders we tattoo and, and when we go into prison in our world, the Chinese say that, Nan zi han liu xie bu liu lei le. But many of them touched by the love of God, they cry like baby. <laughs> and so, Pastor, thank you so much. And I, I just want to say that, church, my family are very grateful to, to this family. And uh, as I go through that trying time, Without your prayer, I, I don't see how am I going through it. And I'm really thankful to God. And God is good. You know, whatever I've gone through, God is always there. He's yeah. always there. And pastor is always texting me, how are you? The pastoral staff, you know, we voicemail praying for me. You know, that... That one minute, two minutes of your prayer, that voice. And every time we come at the right time, Pastor. The moment that I need prayer, the moment that I sometimes, you know, fighting in my mind, the battle in my mind. And, and there come the prayer and I, God is so, so good. And so, Pastor, thank you so much. And I want to say that I want to echo what you always echo, what you always say. Pastor always say something, right? Pastor say, God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Yeah, so, you know, I, I, I really thankful for this family. Amen. And Pastor, can I share something yeah, to yeah, encourage God. everybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, through this, the doctor said that even though your operation is successful, 20% live more than three years. But as Christian, my life is in the hands of God. My life is not in the hands of what the doctors say or statistics say. Yeah. And so the doctor try and say, maybe, you know, from 20% with the operation and see how it goes. Maybe we can increase to 30%. I look at the doctor and say, doctor, I don't need any percentage, any percent. I need one person, and that's my Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And so, well, your life, you got to stay close with God. Yeah. I might go through this suffering, you might go with, to other, other situations, but all of us will face death yeah. face to face. Yeah. Life is not how long you live. Life is how well you live for the purpose and the will of God upon your yeah, life. Yeah, so good, yeah. In this life, it's not for us to build to stay. It's for us to build and prepare for eternity. Yeah. And so nobody can give me an extra minute of my life or take one minute of my life because my life is in the hands Amen. of God. Our lives Amen. Of God. And so right now, I really think, you know, I've started taking preaching engagement. Yeah. And he's going to start this Easter. Wow. Wow. Jesus is alive. He's the same yesterday, today, today, today and forever. forever. Amen. We can Amen. fix our eyes upon Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Uh, why don't we all stand on our feet right now? I'm just going to ask all the pastors come. Let's just come and just pray for Pastor Don. Let's just open our mouth. Just pray in tongues right now, shall we? Shuturiya la karabahadeya. Shuduria la carabahante de la carabahade, a la suduria la carabahada. Shuduria la carabahante de la carabahante de la carabahante de la carabahada. 
Father, you say in lamentation that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy never comes to an end. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord. Father, we thank you for Pastor Don, for Pastor Vanessa. Father, we thank you for Vivian, for Daryl. Father, we thank you for this entire family. Lord, they have been a great light shining, O oh God, in the midst of darkness. Lord, we pray for Pastor Don right now. That, Lord, that your goodness, O oh God, you cover him, Lord, with your love, with your compassion. You say, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that's within us, bless your holy name, O oh God. And that, Lord, that you are God who will remove, Lord, our disease. Lord, you are the Lord, Lord, that will take away, O oh God, Father, the pain that's in our life. Lord, every morning when he wake up, O oh God, he will wake up with a shout of joy, a great yes, faith Lord. will yes, resonate Lord. in his heart, O oh God, that he will experience great faith in you. A new faith, O oh God, will arise within him, O oh God, that once again, a gift of life, O oh God, will be disappointed to him. Father, we pray that you satisfy Pastor Don with long life. Lord, we come before you, O oh God, in all agreement as a church, O oh God, we thank you, O oh God, truly in a place of power, in a place of agreement is a place of power. Lord, we pray for Pastor Don right now. Your power rests upon him. Touch him, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, that his organs are doing well. We thank you that his body is well. His spirit, the Zoe life of God, Father, will take over, O oh God, will take over every part of his body. Lord, yes. that he will do well, O oh God, in his coming years. You bless his coming in. You bless his going out. Everything that he does, O oh God, Father, will bring forth great, great reward in heaven. We bless Pastor Don in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor Don. Let's give Pastor Don Wong a big hand. Thank, thank you, you so thank you. Woo! God bless. Amen. Before you're seated, turn to somebody and say, sign up for the unlabeling run. Father, we want to thank you that this morning we are able to come before you and look into the Word of God. We thank you for all that you're doing in City Harvest Church, in all our lives. And Father, I just pray, not only for those on site, I pray for those watching us online, wherever they are, uh, working in our job assignments, uh, having taken kids for holidays. I just pray even right now, you speak to their hearts and let the word become like a fire and hammer in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone say, Amen. Amen. Not your neighbor and say you're going to enjoy the word. Amen. On Tuesday night, 19th of March at 8 p.m., I'll be conducting an altar call workers training for all our staff, our cell group leaders, our PCGLs, our CGCs, our ministry leaders right here in this arena. Now, it's very important to be equipped to know how to minister in the power of God, how to pray for the sick, how to do effective uh, deliverance ministry. Now, dinner will be provided before the meeting from 7 p.m. And leaders, please, make this meeting a priority. It's going to be worth your time. Now, because all our services are growing, we need to know how to properly minister to our new friends in the power of the Spirit. So this training is also important because the following weekend, on the 23rd to the 24th of March, we'll be having a healing weekend in all our services. Here in the main English services, our Chinese church, our dialect church, our Indonesian service, our Harvest Kids, we all will be praying for the sick that weekend. Jesus says in Mark 16, verse 17, verse 18, in my name, these signs will follow you right? You will cast out demons, you will speak in new tongues, you will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So if you have any family members or friends who need prayer for healing, please invite them to come that weekend. We're going to take time to pray for them, and I believe God is going to move in a mighty, powerful way with signs and wonders. So will you turn to somebody and say, you must come for the training? Uh, yeah, amen. Now, we have been talking about knowing and experiencing the love of God the Father. Yeah? This is the central truth of the gospel. In John chapter 17, after the Last Supper, Jesus Christ was praying by himself in the upper room. Now, the final verse of his prayer is verse 26. Now, this is Jesus' last recorded prayer for the church, for you and I. 
And it really, really shows us the deepest desire of His heart for us. So can we all look at John 17 and verse 26? Can we all read together? Starting now. Father, I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Now, can you imagine what is Jesus praying here? He is praying that we will experience the same love that the Father has for Him. Now, this is really, really the climax of your Christian experience. Father, let the love that you have for me be in them. So we got to ask ourselves, what kind of love did Jesus experience from the Father? First of all, it was a very affirming love. When Jesus Christ was baptized at the Jordan River, God spoke audibly in public for the first time in human history. There was a voice from heaven that all could hear. This is my beloved son, whom I love. With him, I'm well pleased. The love of Father God was so affirming, so public so expressive, he openly expresses his, his affection. Son, I'm, I'm so proud of you. I love you so much. Isn't this what every one of us need? That dad and mom would love us. That dad and mom is proud of me. This kind of affirming love will cause a sense of identity and security to be rooted deeply within you. You know, there's an old saying, it is not so much who you are, it is more about whose you are. When you know that God is your Father, and that He loves you, and that to Him you are worth loving, it builds up your self-esteem and your self-image to no end. You just think about a prince or a princess. Really, they're just ordinary people, right? But from the moment they are born, their words carry weight. They don't really have any resources, but they never act like they're in lack. They don't really have any power, but they carry themselves with great confidence and authority. Why? Because their parents are royalty. How much more your heavenly father who is the creator and the ruler of the entire universe. Turn to your neighbors on your left and right and say, you are a son or a daughter of the king. Yeah. Jesus is praying that you will experience this kind of affirming love, that you will hear God saying to you, my beloved son, my beloved daughter, I love you so much. I'm so proud of you. I'm so well pleased by you. And this was not the only time God publicly expressed His love for Jesus. It happened again on the Mount of Transfiguration. God's voice came audibly from heaven. And He said in Matthew 17 verse 5, This is my Son whom I love. With Him I'm well pleased. Listen to him. Do you see how supportive the father was of Jesus? Hey, you all listen to my boy. He was personally backing up Jesus. Because for quite a while now, for almost the last one year, the enemies of Jesus were intensifying their attacks on him. On some days, even his own disciples, they couldn't understand him. They doubted him. Father now show up. And he said, guys, I love my son dearly. I fully support him. I'm backing him up. Please, listen to what he's saying. It was a tough time for Jesus. But when you have a support like that from your father, what happens to you? You become very brave. You become very courageous. You become strong, right? 
because perfect love casts out all fears. Turn to somebody and say, the Father's love will make you very brave. Yeah. I know Jesus this morning. He's praying that you can experience the Father's supportive love. And then on Palm Sunday, five days before the crucifixion, Jesus now was in deep inner turmoil. The burden of taking the sins of the whole world was getting really heavy. So Jesus, in the upper room, he reaffirmed his commitment to do God's will. And he prayed this, John chapter 12, verse 28, 29. I want you to read together with me the words in bold, three times as loud, starting now. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. You see that? The voice of the Father thundered from heaven for everyone to hear. God was assuring Jesus, Son, you have done so much for me already to glorify me. And through your death on the cross, my name will be glorified even more. You're going to bring salvation to the whole world. Assurance. No matter how old you are, every child looks to the Father for assurance. Especially when you feel unsure about your future. In 2020, in 2010, 14 years ago, 2010, when my case first broke, I didn't go home for many days because the media and press, they were all camping outside my apartment. So for more than a week, I was staying in Pastor JX and Dawn's house. When my dad came to visit me, the moment I opened the door and our eyes met, I teared and my voice broke. My first words were, Papa, I'm so sorry. My elderly father just hugged me, wept on my shoulder and said, Son, you don't have to say anything. Pa will always be here for you. Listen, I was already 46 years old. But experiencing my father's loving assurance was exactly what I needed. Can you imagine what the assuring love of our Heavenly Father would do to you? It would do infinitely more. And this is what Jesus Christ is praying even right now as I'm preaching. That you will experience the same kind of assuring love that He received from Father God. Turn to your neighbors and say, the Father's love is very assuring. What kind of love did God the Father have for the Son? His was an affirming love, a supportive love, an assuring love. We don't have time. But His love was also very generous and very loyal and very honoring. Jesus says, my Father, He honors me. You know, God as a Father, He doesn't go around shaming you or condemning you or pouring guilt to manipulate his children. No, he honors. That means he values us. This is what honoring means, to give value. God goes out of his way to make you feel special, to let you know how much you are loved and appreciated. God says, I love you with an everlasting love that you are the apple of his eye, that he's always thinking about you, watching everything that concerns you. First Peter chapter five and verse seven. This is how special you are to him. Most of all, the love that Jesus experienced from the Father was an intimate love. Jesus addressed God as Abba, Father, Abba means daddy, papa, pa. 
They are all enduring ways. You call your dad. And Jesus is praying that you will experience this kind of intimacy, this kind of closeness. Friends, you can be very intimate with your heavenly father because our God is very kind and very loving and very gentle. He is not at all an angry God. And he's not calling you to be a great performing machine, to stress yourself out into scoring straight A's, that you got to ace every project you have in life, or to strive and struggle to be successful in everything that you do. And then and only then will he love you and be proud of you. No, not at all. God is not like that. If you think God is like that, you have a wrong picture. He's calling you into an intimate relationship to enter into his rest. Oh, come on, you want to clap? Let's give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Come on, church, give the Lord a big hand. Let him know that you love him. Jesus wants you to have a revelation that you belong to your Father in heaven. And he says, I, I have made you known and I will continue to give revelation about you. Because you need to know that God is your Father. He will provide for you. As a Father, He will protect you. He will guide you. He will always be there for you. In Luke chapter 15, Jesus wants to show the Father's heart in the, pro, in the parable of the prodigal son. So actually, there were two sons, and both were terrible boys. <laughs> the younger one is very rebellious and dishonoring. He wishes his dad is dead. Came to the father one day, he said, Father, give me my inheritance now. I'm not going to wait until you die. The dad gave to him, he squanders it all away, with wild living, drinking, partying, sex. Jesus then gives us a glimpse of the father's heart. Every day, his dad was looking outside the window, waiting, waiting for his boy to come home. There is no angry thought in him, just love and compassion, longing for his son. Even when everyone in the town had rejected the boy, the father has not. Even when everyone has given up on him, the father has not. And when the boy comes home, the dad does what no father in that Middle Eastern culture would do. He runs to him. He hugs him. He kisses him and weeps over him. He gives him the best rope, put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and fully restore him back as a son into the family, even though the boy had lost one third of the whole estate. Now we Asians, we don't do that. We normally don't. First of all, we don't openly express our love, especially towards a wayward boy. We don't hurt our kids. We don't tell them we love them, that we miss them. We are too shy to show any emotion. And when they make a mistake, we are not so quick to forgive, especially if they squandered our hard-earned money away. Because as Asians, money is central to our identity, our status, our security. But yet Jesus shows us that in the Father, you see the full garment of emotion. When the son was in rebellious sin, he was yielding and giving. When the son is away, he was waiting and hoping. When the son returns home, he was loving and forgiving, weeping and blessing, rejoicing and celebrating. This is the true picture of how wonderful God, your heavenly Father is. Oh, come on, let's give the Lord a big hand, hallelujah. Turn to your neighbors and your left and right and say, Father God loves you so much. But in the story, 
the dad has another older boy. <laughs> He's very hardworking, but very cold and aloof towards his dad. One day he returns home from the farm, working in the field, and suddenly he hears music and dancing. He asks one of the servants, what's happening? The guy says, your brother is back, and your dad had just killed the fattened calf to celebrate his return. Let's look at the story here. Luke 15, verse 28. Let me read for you. The older boy, the older brother, became angry and refused to go in. He was angry. So the father went out, pleaded with him. But he answered his dad, look, all these years I've been slaving for you, attending cell group meetings, serving in ministry. <laughs> all these years I've been slaving for you, never obeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, he wouldn't call him his brother, this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. This elder boy have no love at all for his family. He's very angry. His younger brother has come home. And that his father is so welcoming. So on purpose, he refuses to join the party, to embarrass his dad before the whole town. Shame him. Yes, he works very hard for his dad, but he doesn't have a relationship with him. Yeah. Everything is cold and distant and mechanical. When you have no relationship with your heavenly father, what are you left with? All you're left with is religion. Everything the elder son did was out of duty, out of obligation, not love. In anger, he speaks rudely to his dad, publicly shaming him. Where's my goat? He demanded. Where is my goat? Look, this guy has the whole farm, and he's angry his dad didn't give him one goat. Look at what the father says to him. Verse 31, my son, the father said, you are always with me. Everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Two sons, and really both are equally lost. The boy outside the church is lost, but the boy inside the church is also lost. The younger prodigal is backslidden. He uses the blessings of his father and spends it on the cravings of his flesh, rebelliously and stubbornly chooses to live a life of sin until he loses everything and comes back to his senses. But the elder son is also backslidden, big time. He's in the house, in the church, but cold, distant, angry. No love relationship with the father. Only just work, 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 duty, duty, obligation, obligation. And he's so angry. Let me tell you, without the father's love, you'll become a very angry person. Remember, anger is just one letter short of danger. Anger, danger. Turn the person next to you and say, it's dangerous to be angry. <laughs> Again, Jesus gives us a glimpse of the Father's heart. Dad humbles himself, patiently pleads with the older boy to please come in. He speaks to him in a kind and gentle voice. Even when his eldest son was so rude and dishonoring, he reassures him, everything in this estate is already given to you. But more than just giving rewards, 
what the Father really, really wants is a relationship. So this morning, are you like the younger boy? Are you like the elder son? Jesus is calling you into an intimate relationship with God as your Father. And He wants to keep on giving you greater and greater, deeper and deeper revelation of who God the Father is. And this is foundational to Jesus' ministry. Because this is what eternal life is all about. John 17 verse 3. Eternal life is not just living forever and ever and ever and ever angry, angry, mechanical, mechanical, cold, 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 distant, distant, distant. So what if you live forever like this? It is a relationship for you to enjoy, to come into the loving embrace of your heavenly Father and to experience His life and to be healed and to be changed and transformed by Him. Come on, you want to clap? Give the Lord a big hand. Hey, I can't hear you. You want to clap? Give the Lord a big clap. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, without intimacy with the Father, both sons, are nursing a spirit of alienation. They are cut off from their dad. Sometimes you're alienated from God the Father because of your own brokenness growing up. If you have been abandoned by your own parents or grew up without a dad or a mom by your side, then it's hard to relate to God the Father. Or if you have a very controlling parent, then it's very hard because when there's control, there's very little love and warmth in the relationship. Or even worse, when there's abuse. One of our members came from a highly dysfunctional home, highly, highly dysfunctional. For some reason, her mom despised her. She would verbally abuse and curse her with words like, you're so ugly. You are unwanted. You are a mistake. I never wanted to have you. I hope you get knocked down by a car and die. Why don't you just leave the family and go and be a prostitute? The verbal abuse eventually grew into physical abuse. Mom would cane her repeatedly using a big bamboo stick and savagely beat her up. The beating was so bad that very often, she went to school with blood stain at the back of her uniform. One time, her mom flew into a rage that she used a towel to strangle her, wanting to kill her. When she was 13 years old, the mom stripped her naked one day, beat her up, and then chased her out of the house to the public road just to shame her in her nakedness. You can imagine this young girl became so emotionally tormented and depressed, she attempted suicide more than 20 times. One day, she was invited to church. And in a service just like this, she felt the love of God the Father, and that love melted her heart. Her life was changed that day when she realized that her heavenly Father loves her unconditionally unreservedly, that she is worth loving, that she's not a mistake. She was gloriously born again. Let me tell you, this story has a very happy ending. The more this girl developed her love relationship with God the Father, the more she grew in her identity as a precious daughter of God. She did very well in university, has a good career, and is now happily married. And the love of God is overflowing out of her so much. She was able to forgive and repair her relationship with her mom. So the family is now reconciled to the glory of God. Come on, let's give the Lord a big hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. When there is abuse at home, you will experience the deep pain of separation, of disconnection. Maybe there's a deep loneliness inside. The spirit of alienation brings with it this mindset. I'm on my own. There's no one here for me. There's no one to help me. No one to provide for me. There's no one to protect me. So I need to defend myself. 
There's no one to fight for me, to promote me, so I need to promote myself. If you live like that, it's a terrible life. And let me tell you, there's only one cure. It's not medicine. The only cure is the love of God the Father. Instead of a spirit of alienation, He gives you the spirit of adoption. Look at Romans chapter 8 and verse 15. Can we all read this together? And the words in bold, three times as loud, starting now. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. God adopts you into His divine family, into His loving embrace. And when He is your Abba, Father, your whole internal wiring changes. Your thinking, your motivation, your values, they are now properly connected to the source again. And the internal wiring doesn't get all properly connected overnight. You must be very intentional to grow in the intimacy. And this is why Jesus wants to give you more and more revelation of the Father and the love that He has for you. Jesus says, Father, I'm going to reveal you more and more to them. And this is what I pray for every single day. This is why I pray for this church. This is why I pray for every cell group, every zone, every division. Jesus, show us, show me more of the Father's love. I'm hungry for more. Because the more you taste of His love, the more you are healed and restored and are made whole. Oh, come on, go ahead and give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Turn to the person next to you and say that Jesus wants to make you whole. Without a loving relationship with the Father, both sons nurse a spirit of bondage, which is what verse 15 says. The spirit of bondage it's a demonic spirit that causes people to be tormented in an emotional prison. It's a spirit which causes you to believe. You will forever be rejected. You will permanently be abandoned. It makes you fearful. So it's a spirit of bondage to fear. I'm not good enough. I'm a failure. People will leave me. They always do. Sooner or later, I'll be abandoned by everyone. The spirit of bondage can drive people crazy. We have one member who came from a family that was emotionally cold and distant. His dad was an absentee father. He was seldom home. So when he was eight years old, some older cousins visited him in the house one day. When he was alone with them, the cousins pulled him into the bedroom and sexually abuse him. This is not the only time. It happened again and again on subsequent visits. By the time he was in his early teens, he was so confused, felt lonely, and emotionally empty. Very often, he went to the shopping malls. He would get picked up by men in the 30s and 40s to have sex in the public toilets or to follow them home. As a teenager, he was craving for affection. So he equated all these as love. Okay, this is the only way I can get love. So he continued to allow himself to be sexually abused. He hated it. He felt dirty. But it has become a bondage, a prison. He cannot be free. It became his way of life giving older men sexual favors in return for love. But all the guilt and shame, coupled with feeling of loneliness, plunged him into a very deep depression, and he became very suicidal. Again, one day, similar story, a friend invited him to church. And for the first time, he was touched by the love of Father God. And he received the Holy Spirit, the spirit of adoption, that craving for sex with older men in exchange for affection 
was permanently broken and the spirit of bondage was cast out. Hallelujah. Come on, go ahead and give the Lord a big hand. He was set free from the torment of the emotional prison. God's love melted his heart and healed him completely. He came to SOT. After that, he fell in love with a wonderful girl. Something he never thought <laughs> that it could ever be possible for someone like him to fall in love with a girl. They got happily married. Today, he's a loving husband and a proud father of two kids. Come on, let's give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Oh, give the Lord a big clap. What a wonderful father we have. Sometimes, people without the assurance and the security of Father God or His love, they can become very competitive. Just like the older boy, the older son, very jealous of the younger son. What does verse 15 say? It's a spirit of bondage to fear. When you have a competitiveness that's driven by emotional rejection in your heart, nothing you achieve can fix that pain. It's like an app in your phone that is never shut off, running in the background. Will people think I'm successful? Will people approve of me? Will they like me? Will they think I'm good enough? You can't stop. Every day you're thinking, will they like me? Am I good enough? Will they approve of me? It will drain you and wear you out when you are not secure in your father's love. And most of the time, you become a people pleaser. You know, you know why it's a people pleaser? You desperately need the approval of others for people to like you. You don't know when to say no or how to say no. You're already overworked, overstressed. You're just too busy to take on anything else, but yet you cannot say no because you're afraid. If I disappoint people, they won't like me anymore. Then they will leave me, they will abandon me. Brothers and sisters, listen to the Word of God. You must allow the love of the Father to enter deep into your soul, to bring healing to the parts where you're wounded and damaged and are hurting in pain. This is the only way to recovery. The more you grow in your sonship and your daughtership, the more you'll be secure in your identity. God is my Father. He is my source. You don't have to be a people pleaser. You don't have to promote yourself or to fear that people won't like you or appreciate you. Turn to your neighbors and say, don't be a people pleaser. One last thing and I'm done, okay? One last thing. The love of God the Father is also the cure for the spirit of death. You notice all the stories I tell you? They all ended up suicidal. When you are broken and rejected in life and you have no loving intimacy with the Father, Satan will constantly torment you with thoughts like you are unworthy of love. Nobody wants you. Life is hopeless. Life is too painful. Why don't you just end it all? Now, this is also called making a death wish. Isaiah 28 verse 15 talks about entering into a covenant with death, making an agreement to die. When you make an agreement with the spirit of death, it empowers that demon to torment you day and night. It will keep reminding you of your death wish. Life is hopeless, painful. Don't you wish you could just sleep forever and never wake up? You'll be happier if you're dead. Guys, this is a lie. This is a death wish. This morning, you must break the agreement with the spirit of death because it's not the voice of God. God is the spirit of life. Satan is the spirit of death. Eternal life is living in the love of the heavenly Father. It is a happy life, a fulfilling life, a life filled with hope and joy and satisfaction. 
Guys, I know, I know. Life is not always easy. But you're still not a mistake. Your Father in heaven has created you. No matter how messed up you feel your life is right now, you are still fearfully and wonderfully made. Father God loves you so greatly. He feels your pain. The ache in your soul. This morning, He's calling you into a deeper and more loving intimacy with Him. How many of you, by a show of hands, how many of you want to experience more of God's love? Put up your hand. Hallelujah. If you want, just wave both hands, right? Just wave both hands. Come on, let's all stand up right now. Come on, let's just come before the presence of God right now. Hallelujah. He's here right now. Just begin to open your mouth, just speak in tongues. Let's worship the Lord. How I need your presence, Lord. How I need your presence, Lord. Spirit of hope, draw me closer to you, Lord. Spirit of life, flow into my heart. adoption. You can sense Him right now, drawing you closer and closer to the Father. This morning, there's an outpouring of the Father's love. You can come deeper and deeper into His loving embrace. I want every eye to close and every head to bow right now. This morning, we talk about those three areas, the spirit of alienation, the spirit of bondage, the spirit of death. We want to deal with it this morning. Hallelujah. God is with you. God loves you. You're precious to Him. Not because of what you have done, but because of who you are. Hallelujah. I want every eye to close, every head to bow. How many of you are going through a very painful, or you have gone through a very painful and traumatic experience as a child? You have a traumatic childhood. Maybe you were abandoned by one or both parents. Or they, they are absentee parents. They are not around. Or you have a very strict and controlling dad or mom. And there's not much love or warmth in the home. How many of you have been sexually abused when you were younger? Maybe not as a child, but as a teenager. Maybe as, as you're dating, you were sexually abused. Or you are physically abused. And there's a sense of rejection in your life a deep loneliness on the inside. This morning, we can be in a crowd of thousands of people and yet, you feel so lonely and so empty. You feel lousy and miserable all day long. And life feels so hopeless. You're struggling with depression. Maybe you have even made a death wish. You just wish you could just sleep forever and never wake up. You entertain thoughts of suicide. If you are any of you are in those areas I talk about, 
this morning God brought you here because He wants to heal you. He wants to set you free. He wants to bring wholeness and recovery to your soul. He wants you to have joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Only the love of the Father can bring healing to all the trauma, all the disappointment, all the misery, all the pain, all the wound, all the damage. Only God the Father could do that. If any of you is in any of those areas I talk about, when I come to three, I want you to lift up your hands. One, two, three. Lift up your hands right now all over this room. Yeah. So lift up your hands all over this place. Yeah, I see so many hands going up right now. Hallelujah. Why don't we just hold our neighbor's hand? Just pray in tongues right now for a moment. Just hold each other's hand. Just pray in the spirit right now. This morning is a morning of healing. This morning is a morning of recovery. This morning is a morning of deliverance. This morning, God is going to pour His love into you. And we are all in agreement today. We want more and more of God. We want more and more of His love. We want deeper and deeper intimacy with the Father. Jesus, bring us to the Father. Bring us to the Father. I'm going to ask you to do one thing. All those that put up your hands. This morning is the day of your salvation. God is going to set you free. God is going to heal you. This morning, I want to command every spirit of alienation and abandonment and death to leave in the mighty name of Jesus. They're going to go. In a moment, your life is going to turn around because of the love of the Father is going to flood your heart. So when I come to three, I want all those that put up your hands. You've gone through a trauma, a childhood pain. You've gone through abuse. You know, you've been let down by people. You've been rejected. You feel lonely. There's a sense of depression and misery, hopelessness. And listen, you, you have made a death wish. Maybe it's even if it's just for fun. I want you today and come and we're going to renounce it. We are not going to open a door for the devil to take advantage and bring us into an early death. In the mighty name of Jesus, you're going to be set free today. All those have gone through trauma, abandonment, pain, abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse. You've been, you felt manipulation. When we sing this song, I want you to come. I want all the cell group leaders all the ministry leaders to come. We're going to pray together. We're going to stay through with you until you're totally set free, until the healing power of God comes. So when I count to three, I want you to come to the front. And church, will you just encourage them? Will you just give them a big hand as they come? One, two, three. Come right now, wherever you are. Come, come, come. Come right now, wherever you are. Just come, 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 come. We're going to pray. Because today is a day of salvation. Today is a day of your deliverance. Hallelujah. Give them a big clap as they come right now. We are going to pray until you have your victory. Why don't we sing from the beginning? Hallelujah. Let's just all worship God. Whole church, worship. I said, Don't pray yet. Leaders, don't pray. We are just going to worship God. Oh Jesus, I, said, I need all the staff to come and help. I need more staff to come to the left side of this place. All the board members, please come. 
Well, Daniel, cell group leaders, come and help me. before you pray can you just turn around and look at pastor i'm going to give some instruction right now hallelujah now today in a moment i'm going to ask you to pray for all our church members guys i want you to stay with them until they have their breakthrough that means you don't just pray and then you know they fall under the power or whatever and then you just stop you pray until you have a breakthrough so it may take Five minutes, may take 10 minutes, you pray through. Now, there are two, two areas we want to deal with. Number one, I believe many of them came up, they have made a pact, they have made a death wish. I want you to come against and break the curse of death, and come against the spirit of death. Now, after that, you pray for healing. You pray God bring healing to all the abandonment, the wounds and all that, you pray. Now, if they are on the floor and they are shaking and all that, don't stop, you pray. You'll be led by the spirit. So I want you to take that moment until they are set free. Church, we are committed to you. We want you to be free today. Today, your life is going to change in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Your life is going to change from today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So all the leaders, if you understand, just lift up your hands. All the leaders, you understand? Okay? All right. Now, all of you, we're going to pray. You can turn around. We're going to pray right now, but just hold on. I want you to say this prayer to be pastor. Now, all of you that needing prayer, two things. First of all, you must forgive all those that abuse you, hurt you, abandoned you, rejected you, molested you, beat you up, abused you. must forgive. You got to say, even though you don't feel it, you say it. As many as you can, you say it. Father, I forgive. I forgive. I forgive. I forgive. Then afterwards, I'm going to lead you to break. You got to renounce it. That means, Renouncing means I'm not going to give you permission anymore to torment my life. I'm going to break this agreement with the spirit of death. I break this agreement with the spirit of alienation. I'm going to break this in Jesus' name. When you do that, we're going to pray. God is going to set you free and the love of God is going to flood into your life. Today, you're going to feel your heart totally set free and make whole. So let's all pray right now. Come on, let's just all pray in tongues first. I'm going to lead you in a prayer in a moment, okay? Lead us just hold on. Show the Allah Karabaha, dear. Show the Allah Karabaha, dear. Allah Karabaha, dear. Everybody say this out loud. I want the whole church to say it together. Say, dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father. I come before you right now. I come before you right now. 
in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In need for your salvation. In need of your salvation. In need of your love. In need of your love. In need of your healing. In need of your healing. Father God. Father God. I surrender to you. I surrender to you. Every trauma. Every trauma. Every pain. Every pain. Rejection. Rejection. Abandonment. Abandonment. I surrender. I surrender. Everyone. Everyone. Who hurt me. Who hurt me. I want you to just forgive the person right now. Just mention a person's name. I forgive my dad, mom, brother, sister, cousin, relatives. I forgive that ex-boyfriend. I forgive that ex-girlfriend. I forgive that pastor, that leader. I forgive right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Just forgive, just forgive. Oh, hallelujah. Let's just all pray in tongues right now. Whenever you hear manifestation like that, it means the demons are leaving. It's a good thing they are leaving right now. Okay, everybody, say out loud with me. Say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I break every agreement. I break every agreement. With the spirit of death. With the spirit of death. I break every agreement. I break every agreement. With alienation. With alienation. Satan in Jesus' name. Satan in Jesus' name. I renounce you. I renounce you. Get out of my life. Get out of my life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, let's all pray right now. Show to the like a Lead us go ahead and pray. Lead us, go ahead and pray. We come against every curse of death. We come against every curse of death. Every thought of suicide, we bind you right now in the name of Jesus. Go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.
stretch your hands to the front. Let's just all pray in tongues right now. Our brothers and sisters, they need all the support. They need all the prayer support. Stretch your hands towards the front. Let's just take about three minutes to pray in tongues. Shuduria la carabaha, jaria la carabaha, jaria la carabaha, jaria. Shuduria la carabaha, jaria la carabaha, jaria la carabaha, jaria. Shuduria la carabaha, jaria la carabaha, jaria la carabaha, jaria. Shuduria la carabaha, jaria la carabaha, jaria la carabaha, jaria. Shuduria la carabaha, jaria la carabaha, jaria. Shuduria la carabaha, jaria la carabaha, jaria. We break every curse of death. We may break every curse of death. We come against the spirit of death. We come against the spirit of death. Go in the name of Jesus. You come out in the name of Jesus. Church pray. Demons are leaving. Demons are manifesting. They have to go in the name of the Lord Jesus. We come against the spirit of rejection. We come against the spirit of alienation. The bondage is broken this morning. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Shuduria la karabaha, jaria la karabaha, jaria. Shuduria la karabaha, jaria la karabaha, jaria. Shuduria la karabaha, jaria. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Go 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 in the name of the Lord Jesus. Shuduria la karabaha, jaria. Come out, come out, come out. Come out in the name of the Lord Jesus. Come out in the name of the Lord Jesus. Shuduria la karabaha, jaria la karabaha, jaria. Shuduria la karabaha, jaria la karabaha, jaria. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Shuduria la karabaha, jaria la karabaha, jaria. Oh Lord, we give you praise. How great is our God? Everybody sing. You know, just now you receive ministry, and then some of you say, I don't know why, suddenly I just scream, and, and uh, it's a beautiful thing. Every time there's manifestation, demons are leaving. They always leave by screaming and all that. So let's just give God a big clap. So many were set free today. So many were set free. Let's give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Usually, after ministry like this, you feel a bit tired. So go and have a good lunch, go back home, have a good nap, rest, take a good shower, just rest. And maybe tonight, just worship God a little bit. Play some Christian music. Tomorrow morning, just worship God a bit. Over the next two, three weeks, spend time just reminding yourself of beautiful scriptures. The Lord loves you. Find, Google those verses. God loves me. The Father loves me. 
You just do this every day. Two, three weeks, I promise you, all these death wishes, they will be a faint memory. They'll never come back again. You're going to totally set free in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord praise. Amen. 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 Now, we still have people that are receiving ministry. So is it okay? We are just going to close in prayer, dismiss you. But you let all these people, we're going to worship God just a little bit more for the sake of all our brothers and sisters. And um, why don't we just hold our neighbor's hands one last time and just pray for one another before we are dismissed. Lord, I just pray impartation of love. Lord, the place of agreement is a place of power. Lord, let there be an outpouring of the Father's love. Perfect love casts out all fear. Perfect love breaks every curse of death. Lord, this is eternal life that we know you, that we love you, that we experience your love for us. Just lift up your hands right now. Father, I just bless this beautiful service, this beautiful church. I bless City Harvest members. I pray the Lord will bless you, the Lord will keep you, the Lord will cause His face to shine upon you. The Lord will be so gracious to you. His incredible grace, His strength will carry you through all your challenges. That every day you experience the love of God, your Heavenly Father. That He will lift up His countenance upon you. You'll find favor upon favor. You'll find most of all the favor of His love. And that you will have peace, the shalom of God in every dimension of your life. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Before you go, can you just hug your neighbor and say, Father God loves you so much. Please be dismissed. The rest of you will continue to pray. So let's sing the spirit of hope. Hallelujah. Continue to minister, those of you in the front. How I need your presence, Lord. Your presence again. Saturate this place, Holy Spirit. Fill the air I breathe. Move in me. Show me your glory. Good.